subscribe to bisbo and press the bell icon see boring news turn into enjoyable stories if oil was what powered the world in the 20th century what is it for this century green energy wifi cryptos wrong on all counts it's a conductor ticket ticket no no not that conductor we mean semiconductor also known as chips or microchips used in just about anything from the obvious to the not so obvious any equipment where you see a panel it needs a chip of varying complexity and the shortage that is happening right now is bringing 169 industries worldwide to a grinding halt most affected are automobiles maruti and mahindra had to halt production even as 700000 buyers wait for their new cars mera number kab aayega sir aap qatar mein ho to keep businesses moving some like mg india are asking customers to downgrade as a lower end model uses 25 to 30 semiconductors as opposed to top end ones that have 80 to 100 so this model is available sooner it's also cheaper some car manufacturers have cut other corners providing only one remote key instead of the usual two the story is the same all over the world as manufacturers close production lines for want of semiconductors leading to 210 billion dollars in lost revenue except for tesla who increased production by almost 30% to a record 300000 plus cars in the september to december 2021 quarter while the rest of the world struggled they did this by rewriting their software we were able to substitute alternative chips and then write the firmware in a matter of weeks the shortage situation is a result of several factors that occurred almost simultaneously the pandemic a global shortage in shipping containers a severe winter shut three plants in texas a severe drought in taiwan staff chip manufacturers of pure water needed in the manufacturing process while a fire in japan's renesas electronics rounded up the calamities all put together the shortage hit india hard it already imports 24 billion 1.8 trillion rupees worth of semiconductors a number expected to go up to 100 billion by 2025 so to wean it off its dependency on foreign sources the indian government announced a 76000 crore 10 billion dollar package for the semiconductor industry that with production linked incentives can go up to almost 100000 crore since we have been talking about the automobile industry and how the shortage of semiconductors is affecting it let's have a look at its impact on their stock prices using the very versatile software of our today sponsor ticker tape here you can search by stock etf indices mutual funds but what i really liked while exploring their software is their screener option let's go check the automobile industry click on four wheelers let's see who all they are now we can add two wheelers three wheelers if you want to explore anyone say for example maruti suzuki it gives you the main highlights in a pop up Now you can explore deeper by going into it. On the left the software tells you what they believe the stock's intrinsic value to be, its dividend returns, a comparison with FD rates, etc. And in the peers section you can see its performance against other auto stocks, a section we can play around with. So go to tickertape.in, remember it's dot in and the link is given in the video description. Coming back to the 10 billion dollar scheme's chances of success, On the face of it India has many advantages we are unarguably the world's greatest coders but the game in this 500 billion dollar semiconductor industry is all about manufacturing a chip is an impossibly small piece of silicon smaller than the size of a fingernail in which reside billions of transistors packed so tightly together that the distance between them is counted in nanometers which is 1 billionth of a meter The lower the distance between each chip means there are more transistors packed into a smaller area making the chip more powerful a 3 nanometer distance is the cutting edge of this fabrication of fab technology today which only TSMC Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Foundry can do South Korea Samsung is not far behind with the established 5 nanometer chip used in iPhones The difference between the two is that a 3 nanometer chip is 15% faster and consumes 25% less power. The United States with Intel, AMD and Motorola 
who pioneered chip design, still control most of the leading edge intellectual property. The Netherlands have a strangled hold on lithography machines that edge circuitry onto wafers, while Taiwan dominates the markets for memory chips with a 65% share, TSMC being the largest player by far. The buy side is dominated by China, who consumes 60% of the more than trillion chips produced globally, $300 billion worth. But despite two decades of lavish government support, the best that Chinese technology could make was a 40 nanometer chip, which is at least two generations behind the five. Such is the FOMO for China that their repeated violations of Taiwanese airspace and threat of annexation was jokingly talked about just to get their hands on TSMC. However, the world is now looking at a China plus one option and India can take advantage of that. India's story is one of missed opportunities. In 1974, a semiconductor PSU that was set up got absorbed by ISRO. As recently as 2017, it had offered to waive customs duty on the import of chip machinery, but that didn't amount to much. This time, India has moved fast to take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It launched a $10 billion scheme after talking to several of the top players in the industry, of which 20 expressed interest. We are in. Us too. So are we. One of the first to commit, an Abu Dhabi consortium, has roped in tech partners from Israel and Taiwan to set up a $3 billion semiconductor fab here. We will start off by producing analog fabs of 65 nanometers and then move on to digital fabs. You heard right, he said 65 nanometers, that too analog, whereas Taiwan has gone to 3 nanometers, digital. But there is logic in this approach. Older and cheaper technology is still relevant for many industries. We should talk less of glamour, more of practicality. The current shortage of chips, especially in the automotive industry, is not high-end, but those of the 40 nanometers and above, which require much lower investment than higher-end chips that go into iPhones and the like. Starting off quickly is important too because the crisis could last till the end of 2022. Also, India cannot afford to pass up an opportunity when by 2030, about half of the car's cost would comprise the cost of chips used in its electronic systems. Outside of fabs too, semiconductors have a value chain of 65 different type of equipment, parts of which India can concentrate on. Chip design is an area that can work well for India. Intel and Samsung already have their chip design centers here. And Samsung has designed several features for its phones in Bangalore, like the 108 megapixel camera and Exynos chip. Then there's the ATP industry, assembling, testing and packaging that together with chip design, contribute up to 40% of the value chain revenue. At present, big fab manufacturers send chips to Malaysia and Singapore for assembly, testing and packaging, who too have shown interest in operating out of India. India has decided to spread its $10 billion thrust across the spectrum in fabs, ATPs and design. We expect to bring in investment of up to $24 billion over a period of 6 years. That includes investment by the Tatas, $300 million on chips used in 5G. And Vedanta, 60,000 crore rupees, $15 billion to make display glasses and LCD panels. Fabs need significant annual investments. For example, if you make an oil refinery, it functions for years with the same technology. But fabs don't. Intel, Samsung, TSMC and everyone else each spend over $20 billion annually in R&D, process improvement and new machinery. Intel's two new fabs in Arizona for $20 billion is part of America's $50 billion intent to stay ahead of China. The American city of Phoenix is spending $200 million to develop roads and sewers, all just to enable TSMC to set up its $12 billion 5 nanometer chip fabrication plant, part of their $100 billion plan investment in new fabs. So important are fabs that of the world's 10 most valuable companies, Two are chip firms, NVIDIA and TSMC. So even though India is late to the game, we may still be able to score. Bizbo's Limerick The world's at a standstill, the chips are down. It's a billion dollar game and only a few are in town. Is India late to the nanometer race? It's China plus one, so we'll still be around. 
You will also find these sources listed in the video description section. Do subscribe if you haven't already and please comment, like and share. We have over 350 videos on our channels on various news topics.